Hey, it's back. It is. Oh dear lord, my microphone's falling off. By Riverside. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to your favorite podcast and the worstest podcast in the world. Live from Lidditz in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, it is the fourth in one podcast. I am your host, Fatty McSchlicker, and across from me or next to me, it's as your always, boy, Captain Boy. Introduces himself now. It's so much less boring. I'm sorry, we're struggling. My microphone. Yeah, what you doing stand, over there, boy? My microphone stand decided to want to come off my Ooh. computer desk. All uh, right. Ladies and gentlemen, it is week number, I don't even know, since college football four. We are sad. Uh, however, um, apparently Josh Allen and uh, Patrick Mahomes this week. I found this old banana peel up here. You should probably throw that out. Probably, um, yeah. That could attract ants. You want ants, Lana? Because this is how we get ants. Because <laughs> this is how you get ants. Um, Josh, Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes forgot how to that they were in NFL football and decided to combine for how many points in the last minute and 26 seconds? Uh, it was 25, I believe. 25 points in a minute. So, ladies and gentlemen... When your girlfriend tells you that 13 seconds isn't long enough, you just show him the last 13 seconds of that game. Show, uh, him, a, show him a picture of Patty Mahomes and say, I beg Patty, to differ. I beg to differ. Um, some big news out of, before we get into this uh, divisional round playoff week, some big news out of the NFL. After 16 years head coaching the Saints go marching in, Sean Payton is out after a pretty lackluster performance without his favorite quarterback in Drew Brees. Um, the 58-year-old coach for obviously 16 years was the Super Bowl XL. What is that? L is in, I don't even know. It's X is su- 10, L is fi- 44. I think 40. Super Bowl 44 yep. when he was the 2000 and. Six AP Coach of the Year. Saints was his one and only head coaching job. Um, as Micaiah says, hashtag he'll be back in two years. Um, Micaiah, Sean Payton had a pretty successful career going overall in his career. Uh, 161 and 97, so he had about a 61 winning percentage. Yeah, about 61% winning percentage overall. Um, Yeah, what do you got? Well, he's clearly burnt out, I think, is why he's really retiring. I think that's what that comes down to. I say he'll be back in two years. I don't, unless if Jerry Jones is going to write him a massive check, he'll probably be in broadcasting. My guess is this year, and that he'll get some looks, n- uh, not, the, not the 22, 2022 season, but the twenty twenty three season definitely. And at that point, I saw that Adam Schefter, like he still has two years left on his contract, so the Saints will want some sort of comp- compensation if he moves teams. But yeah, I mean. But it also his career is definitely goes hand in hand with one Drew Brees. It's mm-hmm. kind of like Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. They they were together for fourteen years, fifteen mm-hmm. years, something mm-hmm. like that. Uh, and really, all their success went hand in hand. Sean Payton did not have success without Drew Brees, and Drew Brees really did not have any success before Sean Payton. So they were. One of those fairy tale love stories, master made in heavens, in terms of head coaches and quarterbacks. But yeah, they, the game will miss Jim. Uh, he was he's a great offensive mind. He was linked to the Michigan job a few times, uh, none recently. But uh, he probably loves, twenty two thousand after Rich Rod. Probably that, he. No, I mean, before I mean he attends Michigan or attended Michigan football games a lot. But uh, right now, people seem to think that. Uh, He'll go into broadcasting with yeah. Amazon getting the exclusive Thursday night football game rights and Troy Aikman supposedly going to Amazon that people think that they might team up Sean Payton with Joe Buck. 
Sorry, I'm making that my lighting situation here is still janky AF, but I need my face and light so the camera sees me well. Um, yeah, cool. I, yeah. I, I don't have anything to say. I thought it was big enough that we should report it. Well, um, but, and I think the bigger question is what happens to the Saints now? Because before Drew Brees and Sean Payton, they were very irrelevant to say the least. I mean, they were the Lions before the Lions. They were the Browns before the Browns. And then Sean Payton and Drew Brees show up and it's Hurricane Katrina happens and then it's every hand on deck and they win a Super Bowl. By the way, Drew Brees, Sean Payton, New Orleans Saints, reason that we have the good old granddaddy of them all, one of the best coaches ever in the history of the game to play Nick Saban at Alabama, most likely, right? Yes, because the uh, Miami Dolphins doctors did not sign off on Drew Brees coming to Miami. Yeah. Oh, is that why? Mm-hmm. I never knew. I never knew. I just assumed he picked Miami over. No, he was going mean, to go to Miami, but the Miami doctor said no. And a lot of people feel that if Drew Brees ended up with Nick Saban, it would have been uh, game over. A dynasty in another dynasty in Dude, the AFC I have, East. I have mm-hmm. no idea what the college football playoff, the college football world would look like without Nick Saban. That's just kind of how crazy. It well, is. Like, I we think could we're, have... we're going to find out here in the next t- ten years. Here, well, yeah, but that's ten years. But imagine if Nick Saban never went to Alabama, right? If Nick Saban never went to Alabama, you have. I don't even know. I, let's look. Just well, real no, quick. Give I, me a second. I, I think it's um, Les Miles. I think Les Miles is running the show at LSU. Let's see. Uh, well, hold on, hold on. Standings 2006, right? That's when he joined Alabama? Uh, maybe 07, yeah. 06, 07, I think. All right. 07, so 08, I mean. Let's see. Number in 2006 Southeastern Conference football standings, um, Alabama was they're in the Western Division, right? Mm-hmm. They were not ranked, and they were two and six. Yeah, no, I mean they were. Florida bad. was Florida was ranked first that year in the Eastern Division. Well, Arkansas. That's, that's the year that Florida beat Ohio State in the Natty. That's right. That's Urban Myers. Um, Arkansas number fifth. Who was their coach? Hold on. I have to look it up. It would have been Les Miles. So Mike Shula was their head coach at the t- for the, the 2006 Crimson Tide. Yeah. No, Arkansas. Micaiah was not Les Miles. It was Houston Nutt. No, 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 no. I'm talking about LSU, bro. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I'm I saying, know saying. I'm saying Ellis? it would have been Le- – the only reason Les Miles got fired is because he couldn't beat Nick Saban. Wow. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Les Miles was the coach. It was his second season. Do you know who his offensive coordinator was? This is interesting. Jimbo no. Fisher. Oh, fun okay. fact of the day. And Arkansas, the head coach was Houston Nutt. Do you know who his offensive coordinator was with his first season? Gus Malzahn. Okay. So, it's just a very interesting. Two thousand six. Yeah. I was eight. So I'm just putting this into perspective. Um, sorry, and I wanted to see Nick Saban is on his 16th season. He started with Alabama 2007. Yeah, so, so the following year, and that was actually before before the, uh, the loss to Texas A&M this year, the unranked Texas A&M Aggies, their last – unranked loss was to Louisiana Monroe in 2007. Right? That was like rock bottom for that program, and then they just took off from there. Yikes. Sorry, I'm just looking at... Um, yeah, I'm just... I was looking at uh, Be- the because so, Flor- so Florida won in six, in seven yeah. LSU won, mm-hmm. or it technically it would have been... Anyway, because of when the, it happens in January, it would have been seven and eight. But yep. LSU won with most of Nick Saban's players, and then Nick Saban kind of got the thing rolling at Alabama and beat LSU in the natty and beat LSU a few times and really blocked Les Miles from taking that program to new heights. So without Nick Saban 
in college football, it would have been L- LSU and Les Miles kind of running I, the town. Well, here we I got, truly believe that. Well, we you have to okay. Let's look. Just we're on this now, and yep. I'm having fun. I'm sure. having fun. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're down the rabbit hole. Might we're as down well. the rabbit hole. So this is 2006. I'm eight. You're four years older than me, right? I'm doing the math right. So that means you're 12. Um, if I'm eight, you're 12. That means you just finished playing for the. I forget who the sponsor of the team was, but the Pirates, and you guys finished last place. Sure. Um, yeah. Winless. Yeah. But I Winless. had a great season, man. Yeah, because you were the best player on yeah. the team Bro, somehow. man, I was cooking that <laughs> year. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so uh, Eastern Division, number one, Florida. That is Urban Meyer-led Florida pre-Tim Tebow. Um, That's uh, Leak and Tebow. No, 2006. Yeah, was that's Tim Tebow, right? T- no, Tebow was the backup, and he came oh. in in like these wildcat packages. That's right. But Leak was the main guy. So, two th- sorry, I'm pulling this. So that was all right. Cool. So Urban Myers, it's his second season. His offensive coordinator, another name, and so was his defensive defensive coordinator. Offensive coordinator is Dan, Dan Mullins. Mullins. Yep. Co-defensive coordinator is Charlie Strong. Hmm. So just names that we've that we've heard. Uh, so Chris Leak. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That he was a captain of, of that year. So um, forty-one to fourteen. Oh, uh, it, it was a big, well, State. and people forget that game started. So Ted Ginn Jr., who was in the NFL for a while, yeah. he started that game with a one hundred yard kickoff return for a touchdown, and that was Troy Smith's Heisman year. That was the That's year right. that it was. So Florida was – Florida really shouldn't have – it was a debate in between a two-loss Florida team okay. and Michigan and the rematch between Michigan and Ohio State. And they put Florida in because USC lost to UCLA. Anyway, Troy Smith is having this amazing Heisman run, and Ohio State looks unstoppable. Florida, two losses shouldn't be in there. Ted Ginn returns the opening kickoff for a touchdown. Everyone goes, up. Oh, here we go again. And then yep. Florida beats them down. So that's that's Florida. So they're number one. They're Urban Myers. Yep. Urban Myers' trajectory. I have to remember. Hold on. I'm pulling up his his trajectory. Was was Florida 2010? He retired because of health issues. Right. Okay. He's going to retire in 2010. So without Nick Saban. Okay. What if Nick Saban? What if Nick Saban never joined Alabama? Yep. So that's. We're at four more years of Florida destroying things, and that's no two thousand no, again. Because look who wins the next year. It's no, 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 no. We're getting there. We're just okay. starting with Florida. Oh, they okay. were number one sure. in two thousand and six. Okay? okay. Now, in the Eastern Division, we also had a number twenty-five over nine and four overall Tennessee team. By the way, yeah. Um, I'm not 100%. Philip Fulmer, I think, was the head coach yes, at that Philip point. Yes, Philip Fulmer, and he had been there for forever. Yeah. Um, he actually just, he was their athletic director from yeah. 2017 to 2021. Yeah, that was a, that was a whole uh, big mess. Yeah. yeah, that was a whole big mess. Um, what was his 20, 2008 season? So I'm just looking at his record. So he had a pretty good, his he retired in 2008, but he was tied for first in the East in 2007. So... Their trajectory, basically, we're going to say Tennessee stays remains the same because he was still going to have a five and seven year in two thousand and eight, maybe yep. one more win, yep. you know, and retire and yeah, and, and retire. Tennessee has never been yes. good since. So the interesting here is the two th- the question mark I think is we have to look on the other side. So Arkansas still going to plat still going to plateau because they're and, Arkansas and end up falling on their face. That's a Houston nut. Houston nut. Is now he went the uh, 2007 was his last year at Arkansas. Then he went to Old Miss, and now he's sitting on the. Ca- There's actually a Houston nut rule. Wait, hold up. Nut recruited 37 players in February of 2010, leading the SEC to enact the Houston rut, hu, nut rule, uh, effective August 1st. SEC teams will be limited to signing 28 football recruits with the usual maximum of 25 to enroll in the fall. Interesting. Huh. 
Wow. So, so he was too good at recruiting. So yeah. they're like, now you can't have all the good players. Um, Such an SEC thing to do. Yeah, he has some. He has some. And when did Bama recruiting. win their first championship under Saban? Twenty ten. Uh, right. I. That sounds right in my head. Let's take a look real quick. Uh, we want to look at the Alabama Crimson Tide. Claim national titles. 2009 would be their first. Under, so it was under, the year. So it goes LSU, then Alabama, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So, 11, uh, 9, 11, 12, 15, 17, 20. Jeez, that's a run. I forget how good he is. He's, that, he is eighty seven percent overall oh, as a head coach. Oh yeah, he's he he's he, as, like as a Saban's head coach under, Al, under Alabama. I want to. Does he have an overall record? Hold on. Well, he won see. a natty at LSU. Did you know that? Sorry, hold on. Nationals, yeah, two thousand and three with LSU. Yeah, right. He he won a natty in two thousand and three, and then bolted for Miami mm-hmm. in what oh five. So he's fifteen and seventeen in the NFL. Yeah. So he's still hovering like right around eighty five percent overall. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's one of the best coaches of all time. Do you think? Would you uh, d- just to sidebar here for a second? Would you put him up with best coach of all time? Yeah, you would have to. You, you I, would I, have I, what what he, what he's did, especially with how things from where he started the dynasty in oh eight. Or oh nine, whenever they won that title, to where he is now, the college ga- landscape has changed. It has gone from a two tight end fullback set mm-hmm. to spread formation, shotgun, hurry up, no off, no huddle offense. It's gone from recruiting and this Houston nut rule to nil and transfer portal and he's just and he's mastering it all very gracefully and very he's picked he's picked up on anything everything very quickly i mean there's not a coach out there i mean belichick obviously would be up there and bear bryant and mm-hmm. and you know some of the co- the great bo Schembechler and some of the great college coaches but They've never dominated a. I mean, even Bo Schembechler never dominated a conference like Nick Saban's dominated. Uh, I <laughs> I had to look it up. Um, where is this? Is the Ohio? Okay, so sorry. Um, dear Lord, that is a dominant football program. So I'm just looking up. So Don Shula is the winningest football coach in in the NFL. Yep. Um, 67%. So I'm just, I'm trying to look it up from a career win percentage. Other way around would be Guy Chamberlain, but that was in the 20s. So that doesn't count. That doesn't count. I'm trying to look with like, with a hundred, with over a hundred career wins would probably, yeah, it would be John Madden, actually, would be the. With yeah, over, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, John. Yeah, hundred games coach would yeah. John Madden John, would pro, would, would be um, at technically winning percentage. John, yes. yes, John Madden and is the best coach of all time. But if you if you look at everything, I don't know how you don't make a list and Nick Saban isn't in the yeah. at least the top three. So this is an interesting one that I had to look at. So the the winning percentage, the top winning percentage in college, um. Now this doesn't. This does not. This is Division Three, but so it doesn't count. But goes go on. to well, it goes to a Larry Crares, okay. I believe. Twenty-seven years at Mount Union, the Mount Union College or University, probably Mount Union. University of Mount Union uh-huh. in Division Three in the Ohio Valley Conference, which is yeah. a pretty good conference. Uh huh. He won. He he won ninety-two percent of his games. Total. I mean, yeah, very hard to do, but still, I wouldn't put him up there with greatest so the coaches hi- of all time. So the highest would be of Division Three. Uh, I would, hmm. um, I, would, I mean, dude, he won ninety three, ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight, two thousand, one, two, five, six, eight, twelve, fifteen, and seventeen when he retired. 
I yeah, I mean that, that that's a pretty. Good oh, I'm run. sorry. He retired in 2012. So basically, from all of their national championships except well, for two, wasn't wasn't Mountain Union kicked out of Division Three because they were too dominant? Wasn't that that school? Oh, were they? There was a team that was kicked out of Division Three because they were they were told to get lost because they they were too good and they were making things unfair. Uh, that might be who this is. I think I remember. Sorry, hold several in addition to the two longest winning streaks in NCAA history, 50, 54 and fifty five wins in their two streaks. The Mount Purple Raiders won a conference title in 23 of his 27 seasons. 21 conference during his tenure was only lost eight games and tied three in conference play. Uh, I mean, again, it's impressive, but it's Division Three football. Yeah, purple and more games. Finally, his record, 20, 20, 72 and 3 in his final, became best history, surpassing Tom Osborne's um, in a five-year mark of six sixty and three. Well, I get that. It's, well, that that Nebraska run. Speaking of Tom Osborne, yeah. that Nebraska in the nineties run, like eighties and nineties, end of the eighties, early nineties. That was a heck. Like Nebraska, people forget that what Scott Frost is trying to bring back is one of the greatest okay. stretches in the history of. Division One football. It's Dayton. Dayton's FCS, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Steve Ryan. I don't know if you. No, sorry, Mike Kelly. I apologize. Um, University of Dayton, eighty-one to ninety-seven. He has a, a point uh, eight, an eighty-one percent winning percentage. So this is just we're learning about things. So uh, yeah, so, it's now, only, so now we're it's, just talking about random things that no, really no, 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 no one no, cares no, no. about. I'm coming back. So that's FCS. So we have best best is in in the terms of best football coaches of all time. Okay, you have to put in John Madden. Yeah, no offense. We uh-huh. have to put in John Madden just because of how dominant he was. Bill Belichick because yep. of dynasty. I'm only. This is. These are small. Larry, whatever his face is from Mountain Union. No offense, he's <laughs> for, low on the from, list. From Mountain. From Mountain. No, I mean he deserves. Okay. Clearly that run, then, he deserves n- to be on there. No offense. The two people who I'm arguing are the best coaches in of football, ever, is Tom Osborne and Nick Saban. Bear Bryant, sure, but sorry, dude, you got 78 percent of your wins. I'm looking at pure domination. 80% of his Division One wins, that's his time at Toledo, Michigan State, LSU, and Alabama. He's at 80% with, how many is that? 269 wins overall. Yeah, and uh, seven national titles. Yeah. You could put Joe Paul up there maybe if you want to. I'm 409 wins, 46 years coaching. How uh yeah, Tom Osborne, what what are his stats? It's Tom Osborne, sorry, let me if go you're back gonna to throw Taz Osborne at Tom yeah, Osborne. So Taz there. Osborne coached Nebraska seventy three to ninety seven. He coached for twenty five years, he had two hundred and fifty five wins, forty nine losses and three ties. He his winning percentage is eighty three percent. So are you just strictly going off winning percentage or are you I'm looking just, at the Cause how many nannies did he have? So that's a good question. He has three national titles, 94, 95, and 97. He has that, two big... I, big... I, so, so, so that 94, 95, that, that, that stretch run of 94 to 97 yeah. is one of the best stretches of all time. And Scott Frost was the quarterback of the 97 yeah. team, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he's, he's only 500 in his bowl games. Dear well, Lord. Well, and Nick but Saban yeah, so is he, well over 500. So that's a good point. So he has, he, sorry, just looking, just looking. So that is, that's a really good point. He has 12 big eight titles and one big 12 title. That's in 2097 is when. Right. Um, yeah. So, and he quit, he quit. When did he, he was the head. Sorry. He was, he quit being Nebraska's head coach in 97. So, um, and then let's look at Saban here real quick. Before we get back to what would college football look like without Nick Saban, 
which neither of us were planning on talking about this, nope. but it's a fun conversation nope. to have. Yeah, I mean, it, w- it would still be LSU. I mean, we haven't even gotten hold to on, L- hold, on, hold on, hold on. Let's finish our, co- our one argument, and then we'll go. Our one argument? We're not even arguing. We're not you're arguing. Just, you're, our one, you're just our... giving people stats that no one cares about, Captain You Boring. care. You care about. Well, I do care about them, but okay. like. So let's pick. Greatest football coach of all time. Okay. Right now? You want you want to Right fight? now. Okay. Right now. And let me give you so Oh, but you're giving seven me the nas- options. Seven national titles, tw- 10 SEC, this is Nick Saban, 10 SEC titles, one MAC division title. Um he's 9 and 4 in the CFP. He's 8 and 11. He's only a little bit better than Tom Osborne in bowl games. So, you have three people. I'm going to give you three people to choose from. Okay. okay. Sure. Nick Saban. Yep. Tom Osborne. Nick Saban. Bill Belichick. Nick Saban. Okay. It's Nick Saban. All right. So, we picked Nick Saban. We're going back. I mean, I, t- I told you that like 20 minutes ago that Nick okay, Saban was the greatest what? culture of all time. I like Wikipedia. <laughs> Let me have it. And this. then you fell down the Wikipedia rabbit hole. <laughs> Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. Okay. Bear Bryant Stadium uh, is a natural a natural grass stadium field oh. since since you like field so much. Okay. This is time for Simeon's fun fact of the day. Oh, here we go. The great one of the greatest mysteries in all of the universe is the fact that we have no idea why hot water freezes faster than cold water. It does. Yep. Oh, I didn't. I didn't even know. I didn't. You could. The, your fun fact could have been that hot water freezes faster than cold water, and I would have been like, "Oh, that's a fun fact." But now there's a fun fact that no one knows why. That's a super fun fact. You just hit me with two fun facts. Mm-hmm. Again, humans are pretty well. That dumb. that is that's a that's a fair <laughs> point. That's a fair um, point. Okay. Oh, by the so, way, Alabama's never also missed a playoff. They have appeared in all seven. 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh, wait, no, they did. They missed 19. Darn it. So, do you really think Les Miles... Do you really think Les Miles would have been the Nick Saban? If I, I, don't, Nick Saban? I don't know if he, would, if he would have been at the Nick Saban, but if you look at it... So, if you look at it, they, they had a natty over Ohio State. Right? Then yeah. the... Then I don't, and then I don't know. I don't know what happened that that first year. How did they do that following year? Nick, uh, first year under Nick Saban? No, 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 no. LSU. How did they do the following year after they won the Natty? So <laughs> what was that in '09? Hold on, I'll look. So 2007. Um, sorry, I'm just seeing they were no 2007. They won the Natty, LSU, right? Yeah. Yeah, 2007, they beat Ohio State. They beat Ohio State. State. And then 2008, what happened? 2008, they went 8-5. and five. And then what happened? 2009, they beat, They lost to Penn State in the Capital One Bowl. And then 10, they made it back to the Natty. 10 was the Cotton Bowl Classic versus Texas A&M. They finished 8th. And so 11 12, was... 12, 11, they lost 21-0 to zero to Alabama. Right, and so that beating Georgia in the SEC championship games, right? How did Alabama, wow, the BCS sucked. Yeah, no, the BC, the BCS definitely sucked. So that, so okay, so let's just say that's two natties. I don't know who they would have placed, but LSU's defense that year was amazing. So well, they, it had the honey badger on it. It had the you honey to, badger plus some and Patrick Peterson, I think. So they would, they would have. That's two natties, and then how they do the following year? Just walk it out. Yep, in 2008 season, they lost by one point in the Chick-fil-A Bowl to Clemson after finishing the year 14th in the AP poll. They went 10-3, and 6-2 and two in the SEC. Um, and this is with Alabama, okay? 13, they finished um, 14th. They lost by 7 to Iowa in the Outback Bowl. Okay, so maybe I'm over-exaggerating, but... Yeah, it, that's why, that's but why I, I'm wondering. I, and they, I, lost, they lost in the Music City Bowl in 2014 to Notre Dame. I'm just trying to go so here. So I think, but you have to remember, a lot of, or at least, a lot of the times I believe that LSU was almost undefeated when they ran into Alabama about halfway through the season. 
Rodgers. In which year? Sorry. It, in every year. In every year, LSU... Oh, with Nick Saban? It, it, w- against Nick Saban. Yes, when, when Les Miles was the coach, it just seemed like, at least the storylines that I'm remembering, is that Les Miles is so close... And but he just has the Alabama hump he can't get over. Yep. And well, he here's ju- here's a good example. 2015, undefeated going into week like 10, November 7th. Yeah. Loss. Right. In Tuscaloosa, November 7th, Alabama, number four, Alabama goes on a three game losing streak. Right. Comes a- back. A- a- exactly. That's, that's so- 2015. That's a year before he he loses. Sorry, I'm scrolling all the way down. Ah, Mississippi State. He doesn't play Alabama until, again, early November, but he had already lost to Mississippi State and Auburn in 2014. Okay, but before but before that, let, let's get back okay. closer to, like, the Nat, his... Okay, the, let's, let's go back. Let's go back. Here we go. 2010, 9, all right, 2008. No, we want the year after that. No, 2007. That's the year they won, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so 2007, that's his first year... That he played, and he beat Alabama uh, by seven points. Okay, so so maybe I'm not clear. Go to the year. That's 2007. So yeah, this I is understand. the year after. No, I just no, wanted no. to start there. No, 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 no. I, okay, uh, okay, yeah, go go for it. Okay, the year after. So yep. Nick Saban's first year. Yep. The first year, which is 2008, so his first real year. Yep. Number, they lost to number one Alabama after two losses, one to number 11 Florida, one to number nine Georgia. Okay, okay. so two top, two top ten losses. Continue. Okay. Number one Florida into the 2009 team, win against Auburn, Tulane, lost to Alabama, number three. So okay. one loss to number one Florida. And, and one loss to number three. And let's just say they, they, they beat Bama. And did they have any other yep. losses that year? In 2009? What, whatever year you just gave me. Yeah, they lost to Old Miss and then number 11 Penn State in the circuit, in the Citrus Bowl. Okay, so if you take out the Alabama loss, though, that Old Miss is for all the... Okay, okay, that's fair. Go ahead. Yep, all right. All so, right. I'm just saying, I'm starting... The reason I'm being so accurate with these, yeah. we have a little bit more. 2010, loss at number 4, Auburn. Loss at number 12, Arkansas. Uh, you're, no offense... Your theory starts to lose some more. It, no, for sure it does. I think I just have this memory that Les Miles, for whatever reason, was just the Alabama Nick Saban hump away from really dominating the conference. And it does not appear. However, from what I'm rem- remembering, kind of like Ed Ogeron was kind of the same way. Like his teams were always good and in the national spotlight top 15 until he ran into Alabama and then they just fell fell off a cliff so i'm not sure it would have been less miles but would it have would it be someone outside the sec would it have been ohio ohio state well i mean yeah as soon as urban meyer got there i just i think it would have been the world would have been a little bit more competitive not to yeah. be rude i Good for Nick Saban being dominant. He worth, every, in my opinion, he's worth every cent that he gets. He, I'm sure he enrolls tons of kids because Alabama's a successful school. So I'm not not hating on Nick Saban here, is what I'm saying. But currently, the SEC, and I've been saying this all year, the SEC is a and Alabama specifically. College football is a monopoly, and at the top, and the only the standard oil of college football is Alabama. Sure, sure. But um, I, 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 and I think that's why some people were so excited to see a white man Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, a just, white man <laughs> uh, uh, for him to finally beat Alabama because maybe that's uh, a change of the oil, a standard oil at the top. But again. <laughs> Thank you, but you still. Ha- but then now, if that happens, you start Dude, still run into the problem now. So if Kirby and Georgia take over Bama's spot, which I don't believe, I still think Alabama and Nick Saban oh, are yeah, going to yeah, be yeah. the the creme de la creme there. It, it you still have it's still the SEC that is still the top synthetic oil in the Maserati that runs. A hundred percent. Uh, why are you bringing up oil? I was just using well, the most well-known monopoly of all time in Standard Oil. 
What do you mean the most monopoly in Standard Oil? So you know what a monopoly is, right? Yes, I know what a monopoly okay. is. Yes, and it's not the board game, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Just mm-hmm. making sure. Yeah, I know what a monopoly. Um, and so Standard Oil. Standard where- Oil's the most well-known United States monopoly of all time. Oh well, it can't be that well known because your boy didn't know it. <laughs> you have a poison in your mind, and the fact that actually you can't no, that's see the wrong sound. So- Here we go. Again, humans are pretty no, dumb. That's you. you just know a no, lot uh, of you d- dumb fun facts. You're Mr. Dumb Fun Facts. All right, facts. Com- comment down below if you knew Standard Oil was a monopoly. Just like, and just if like it was the most well known, just well known just monopoly. regular car oil. Dude, JD Rockefeller. The reason the Rockefeller yes, I, yes, I, exists. I, Standard Oil. It, okay, the so, reason so, that the car works and your house is warm. Standard well, fucking oil. That's dude. actually that's actually not true because my car my house runs on electricity, so poke a hole in that. Okay. And also, I'm just gonna say I don't I'm going to guess less than half half the population in the United States know that standard oil is the was. What it's not anymore? Okay, was the greatest monopoly in we have this thing called the antitrust laws. Okay, in no, we don't no. allow monopolies. Get, get to on stick to around. something else. Something else. Go into we something are. else. We are okay. So speaking of, Alabama's I don't care about dominance. antitrust bank um, we're, law. Neither do I. Uh, at the uh, speaking of Alabama's dominance, uh, Alabama, uh, Nick Saban, Bill O'Brien, and someone else. I think their quarterbacks coach was spotted. At Archie, one of Archie Manning's basketball games. Okay, it's not Archie man- Manning. It's Arch Manning. His name's not no. Archie. It's no. Arch. No, that's that's his dad. No, his dad's his grandfather. His grandfather's his Archie. grandfather's Arch. No, his grandfather's Archie. He's no. Archie. Nope. I'm sure you're right, but I, I have to. I'm Google looking it, it up now. Sense. Archie I'm, Manning. You type Arch it Manning. in, Fuck and who is it? Me. The old guy. Boy, does it like does that. it always suck you to like suck, that. bro? Does it always you, suck to suck? Okay. Figured, dude. You had one job. Just That's the one. You, those are used to me. Yep. Um Yeah, okay, so he was spotted at um he was they were spotted at, at the basketball game. His basketball yeah, game. Is 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 are we why or are we getting a little bit out of hand? Well, let me show you why and, we're getting. And do a li- you think? Well, well, let me let me show you why. Let me show everyone why. Everyone watching okay, on Makai, YouTube, take this over. My wife's calling me. Okay, great. This is why everyone is so out of hand about Arch Manning. If you're watching on YouTube, that's his. We got grandfather, uncle, uncle, and then his dad was a before he broke his neck a top. Uh, wide receiver recruit out of high school who was supposed to who was Peyton and him were supposed to play together. His one uncle is one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time in Peyton and his second one is a two time Super Bowl champion in Eli. And so people just kind of assume that he's going to have all not only the athletic ability that his uncles have in terms to but then all of the compounded knowledge between the two, between his grandfather and his two uncles, in order to dominate the sport of football. And I so he clearly has the athletic ability. That is you can see that on high school tape anywhere. I mean, he can run a little bit, he can throw. What I think a lot of people are getting excited about are his intellectual it's his intellectual mind hole and whether because if he is even half of what Peyton was or half or more than half uh 75% of what Eli was he is going to be a top flight NFL quarterback mm-hmm. right because half of whatever Peyton is 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 what still a starting quarterback for a long time in the National Football League? Half of half of Pey- Peyton's mind is what Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, probably right because Aaron Rodgers is mostly just talent. I think most yeah. people would agree with that, right? I mean, yeah. yes, he's smart. You have to be smart to play quarterback position, but I mean, very few were as smart as Peyton Manning. So if you're had, you get Aaron Rodgers. So you're at least getting one or two Super Bowls out of that with Arch Manning. But I, th- I really think it's just the brand. Mo- ah, mo- dude, it- Listen, he's talented. He's very talented. He should be the number one re- uh, quarterback 
recruiting class of whatever his class is, 23. 23, 23 yeah. so not this year, but next year. Correct. He, he definitely should. All I'm saying is that the brand helps him. The name Manning that is on the back of his mm. jersey helps yeah. him the most. If if he w- if his if his name on the back was was Bumble McBumblebee, right? Yeah, the talent would be there, but people would only now start paying attention to him, and people wouldn't know he existed until he walked on campus and got his first career start on right. national television. The fact people knew that he was playing football as a freshman is because he has Manning on the back of his jersey. Interesting. Okay, so he has offers from everywhere. T- Tennessee, SMU, Oklahoma, Notre Dame, North Carolina, LSU, Duke, Clemson, Boston College, Texas, Old Miss, Georgia, and Alabama. So it concerns me that none of the Big Ten schools are in on this. Why is this all, is it because he doesn't want to go north? I, I, well, well, because it well it boggles my mind because both Peyton and Eli played Tennessee Peyton, and o- Oklahoma and, o- and Old Miss. So Tennessee and Old Miss, yes, I get that. But then, but then Eli played for the Giants, so you would think that he would have some exposure to the Northeast. And Peyton played in the Midwest, and that's right where Michigan and Ohio State are. Not to mention Ryan Day and Jim Harbaugh, specifically yeah, so, Ryan Day, who does great things with quarterbacks. Yeah. So here's the here's the interesting. So you have Old Miss, who, sorry, I'm just secondary, primary. Okay. So it's just who they. So you have Old Miss, which is Lane Kiffin. Roster outlook: twelve quarterbacks in that room right now. He also t- he so he took visits just because I'm a nerd. He took visits to SMU, Clemson. Sorry, what were they? SMU was just because Sonny Dykes was there. He he's not interested in SMU anymore. I got it. He's interested that. in Sonny Dykes. Yeah, got because well, so Sonny he... Dykes, you that is the air raid offense. Sonny Dykes. Okay. I mean, you're going to throw that ball around all the time, and that's exactly what quarterbacks want to do. They yeah. want to throw so the ball alive. He took an unofficial visit to Clemson, an unofficial visit to SMU, which because I don't Dykes. think you're allowed to take official visits until you're a senior. Yeah, unofficial visit to LSU. Alabama, Old Miss, and Georgia. Those are where he took he took uh, unofficial f- official. Visits. He took he took official visits too. Um, interesting. Okay, so and the so you really just think it's brand? Sorry to bring back on the. I don't want to get sidetracked. You really just think this is all brand? If he was a, a no name, do you think the amount of people? It, Nick Saban went to a basketball no, 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 game. No, 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 no. In terms of college coaches and recruiting, yeah, if he was a no-name recruit, but still his talent level, yeah. he would be known. Why I'm saying is that it would the fact that it was made public that Nick Saban was at his basketball game yeah. is because his last name is Manning. Got it. You, you you see you see what I'm saying? Like there's I do. A diff- like no one knew who Bryce was. Bryce Young was, except maybe the people outside of Tus- Tuscaloosa and every single college football nerd geek who was paying attention to that. Right. Okay. But yeah. if Bryce Young's last name was Manning, everyone would have been flipping their shit the moment he announced. But no one heard of it until Bryce Young stepped on the field this year. See what I'm saying? Right. I do. Yeah. I do. Okay. That It's crazy to me, but it, it, you answered it is- the question. It, it is, in- but I'm glad to see that he, I mean, and his brother, who's younger than him, is also his center in high school. Oh, I forgot about that. So. He's going to get a lot of wide yeah, receivers uh, just and kids ima- Just imagine when Peyton's son, if Peyton's son grows up, and I can't imagine he won't, grows up to play quarterback. Just imagine the recruiting that will take place over Peyton and Eli's children. That, it, I mean, it, it honestly. It's like Bronny James. It's the same concept yeah. as as Bronny Except James. LeBron James. LeBron James Jr. is actually a pretty, really good difference maker basketball player. What? And not Arch that, Manning not, isn't. Not that Arch Manning isn't, but you get what I'm saying. I mean, like, he set the freshman record at his high school for touchdown passes. Yeah, but he's in, okay. Do it in Texas, and then I'll be impressed. That's all I'm saying. I mean, it's Louisiana. Yeah, do it in Texas. And LSU then I'll be wins natties off of kids just from Louisiana. Dude in Texas, and I'll be impressed. 
to your mom in Texas and then I'll be impressed. <sighs> the fuck you are. Um, <laughs> so totally switching topics here. We have a few things we want to obviously. Thanks for guys listening. Oh, yeah. To bring it up, this podcast commercial mm. free brought to you by you yeah. guys, the listeners. Follow uh, us on Instagram at fourth and one podcast. Follow us on Instagram. The big Mario super slugger himself. I'm sure we'll be posting videos of his breakdowns of some sick plays as well as uh, fourth and one anchor.fm slash fourth and one sponsor us there any little bit helps to i don't know make us not be the worst podcast in the world hey, maybe i don't one think day. we're the worst but i think we're the most mediocre podcast on the interwebs now I mean, oh you we, upgrading us well but I, our tagline is the worst is po- well, actually our tagline is as frustrating as making a decision on your own correct so we're the most one. frustrating podcast on the interwebs but i listened to us the last last week uh, it was your second week hosting yeah I, I like the vibe a lot more and i think we're a lot more um it's a lot better. So, uh, yeah, I would upgrade us. All right. All yeah. right. So we're the most frustrating and mediocre podcast. I can I Absolutely. Can dig. All right. I can dig. All right. So you have the r- absolutely wrong week to bring this up, but I'm very interested in why you want to bring this up. It is the man who only knows drama. The uh, man. Yes. Okay. The, the man who raised himself since he was 14, and it shows. Antonio... Brown. Well, you why cl- are we bringing well, up the why, man who never played another? Why am I bringing this up? Because you clearly didn't see the interview last night. Oh wait, he. Oh, what do we <laughs> have from Antonio Brown? So, so I just just Google Antonio Brown, Brian Gumble. He was on Real Real Sports Live. So why you find that, and then you can do your screen sharing thing, and then we can share the video, or maybe not. I don't know if it's copyrighted or whatever. So Brian Gumble is on HBO Real Sports. He sat down it was a video skype interview with antonio brown and his lawyer and they asked him they basically clarified with him why why he did the things that he did and does he find it frustrating that coaches want him or all previous coaches and teammates say that he needs mental health and his lawyer says that that's absolutely not true and it's blasphemous in terms of that he doesn't need any mental help and that the Buccaneers offered him $200,000 to sit on the sideline and seek mental health. Um, But basically be a part of the team and just seek mental help. And he, and it, and he, they're going to sue the Bucks as it is over. As you can see, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're not log on to YouTube and fast forward to the four forty seven and, 30 second mark and mm-hmm. you'll see what Simeon said but um, that it was about his ankle that they injected him with Toradol both the week prior and this week and so that he couldn't really feel whether he was doing more damage to his ankle I can guarantee you as someone who works in orthopedics a shot of Toradol does not mask a fractured ankle whether you're fracturing it worse I'm just letting you know however these guys do have high pain tolerances then, which is all fine, so they're going to sue the Bucks over that in his release, and the Bucks, whether I'm sure that they did offer him a bonus to try to get him mental health, because clearly, I think everyone believes at this point he has some. But Brian Gumble did ask him, "Do you believe you have mental health issues?" And do you know what Antonio Brown said? Oh wait, hold on. It was it was listed. It was listed. That was the thing. He needs mental. Br- Br- Antonio Brown. I have mental wealth. Yes. I know a lot of people may not understand me, know how I look at things, or don't know how I react to emotional things. But it's not for them to understand me. And quote. Okay. So first of all, the fact that he, the first words out of his mouth were "I have mental wealth" should tell you a lot. Number two, he has a point with it's not people. I'm sure yes that people don't understand how he reacts to things and yes he reacts to things differently but also you don't see every all the other nfl players that were historically not understood for their actions and how they react to things walk off the field in the middle of the game take their pads off throw them into the stands and just walk off the field and uh number three as someone who works in a post 
anesthesia care unit. That's PACU for those of you who didn't know. I am pretty good at telling, at knowing when you're high or not off of some sort of drug, whether that be anesthesia or otherwise. Antonio Brown was high for that interview. So that should also, last night I'm talking about. So at least he looked that way. So that should also go into the fact that if he was indeed, then that kind of brings into the fact, why are you showing up high for one of your most important interviews since you walked off the field? But yeah, no, I just found it really hysterical that his comment was, do you believe you have mental health issues? I have mental wealth. <laughs> and, and and then he went on to say some other, but I have mental wealth. Like, we, uh, <laughs> so, so this is interesting. So first of all, I didn't know he started a quarterback he played uh, one year at a tech prep school, um, North Carolina Tech Prep. He passed for 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns, uh, or rushing for 513 um, before he went to play for Butch Jones at Central Michigan, basically. Um, he Doing that at football, um, he received a scholarship for FIU, Um but was expelled before the season for an altercation with security. Um, oh, so I didn't see. I didn't know that. So the, he has a history of doing this kind of stuff. Well, it, this isn't new. Most people look. I was trying to. I was hoping his Wikipedia entry would have it because I didn't want to speculate. Um, his father was Eddie Brown. Touchdown, Eddie Brown. He played in the Arena Football League from '94 to 2003. Um, Dude, you're just a fun fact machine, man. Yeah, I'm just letting you know. I think Antonio Brown's history goes something along the lines of father really wasn't necessarily in the picture all that much, um, but his ma he I think he had like a bunch of siblings too, and because his father necessarily wasn't in the picture, he kind of grazed himself, but he he didn't necessarily have. I mean, he went to a Northern Miami high school. It's not like they're going to be no their coaches are going to be known to like be a part of these kids lives so it's not really like he was raising himself is right. what i was yeah, trying sure. to with it, without a final figure i get what you're saying yes basically in the hood he's going to try to stick up for himself so that's why he says stuff like he has mental health he also has 1 2 3 4 5 6 kids i would i'm i'm going to pull it up here personal life four sons and two daughters he has three sons with and two children by two of so three three different women. So he th- has all six which, kids with three which, different women. Which let's let's be honest, that's not uncommon for NFL players. I mean, Antonio Cromartie has what nine different kids with seven different women or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I'm just saying. Plus, he had a vasectomy, which that doesn't add up. But go mm-hmm. on. <laughs> he, why would he? during and before the 2018 season? He included tossing furniture out of his 14th floor apartment window in April, nearly hitting a 220, a 22 year old, 22. Oh my gosh, a two and a half, a one and a half year old on the patio below. Well, um, I didn't. I don't even remember hearing about that. Listen, he he has not, in terms of his exagger exaggerated actions is what I'm going to call this. I would call what he did against the Jets an exaggerated action. Yeah. Drama. Mm -hmm. Drama. His drama drama. really has... I mean, people make joke of this, but his hit that Vontez Barfick Barfick did, that head-to-head hit where he was laying in in that playoff game where he was laying in the middle of the field and didn't move for, like, ever and had that severe concussion. That's what people... I, I, I know people okay. make light of this, but it really did kind of start there. Now, right after that, they got he also got a huge contract from Pittsburgh, and I, so I think so, the money definitely changed him. But so I, I it, it, head injuries don't they can, and I get that I'm not saying this as a doctor, but normally what head injuries do is emphasize what's already there. They're obviously known to completely change someone's personality, but he has a history of this. So I think this is more an emphasizing and 
of what he already was, of someone who maybe didn't necessarily know what to do with his emotions because well, he and, wasn't and, shown. And, and you kind of and you kinda, and then you kind of mess up the emotion center of the brain. Well, and then yeah, you, I'm going to kind of missed out. my last point, which was they gave him a huge contract, right? No, and no, so no, that's now what I'm he saying. has all this money he's never had before, and yeah, so and I, I'm more thinking from an emotional aspect, like. Hey, I don't necessarily know what to do with my emotions, but correct. But maybe it was just. But now I can't process them because I have a physical injury to my head. But but now and then and I now can do I can whatever I want because I right. can I can afford it because now I can live out loud. Yes, yeah. Um, I think my wife needs to call me. So move on to your next topic, which so was can... what. You, my, I'm pulling it up because that's all I have about Antonio Brown. Well, no, I mean, I again, I just more wanted to talk about how funny it was that he responded to the question with "I have mental wealth." Oh, yeah, that's like hilarious. who who responds like that? No one responds like that. <laughs> <laughs> I have mental wealth. Well, you know who does? Kanye West. That's like, who responds like that. Kanye West and Antonio Brown are very similar. You are correct. It, it's it's, uh, it's a little bit. So so while you figure out your play call, let me talk about the NFL divisional game. Let me be yes, captain. Please Blaine. make okay. it. Ma- so well, the NFL, the NFL round. divisional round was one of the best weekends in in terms of NFL playoff weekends. I've ever seen. All four games ended on the final play of the game. Three on game-winning field goals, one on a touchdown in overtime. Let's start with the first game. Bengals at the Titans. Joe Burrow was sacked nine times. He is the second quarterback in NFL playoff history to be sacked eight-plus times in a game and still win. The other being in 2003, Donovan McNabb against the Packers. Joe Burrow has moxie. He just keeps getting up, keeps getting up. The difference was Jamar Chase, and I think that the Titans relied too heavily. It was Derrick Henry's first game back from injury, and I think the Titans thought that he would just be King Henry in midseason form, and it looked like he missed half the season because of a foot injury and foot surgery. And so, and Ryan Tannehill threw three interceptions. One wasn't his fault. It was tipped, but Ryan Tannehill, who had no turnovers the previous three games to end the season, threw a interception on the very first play of the game. Uh, in the second game, which was Packers at 49ers. Packers, are you kidding me? It was cold. It was sub-freezing. It was near zero. It was snowing at the end of the game. You let not only a field goal get blocked, you let your winning 10-3. to You then let the Niners block a punt and return it for a touchdown. The Niners were doing this much on offense the entire game. This much the Niners were doing. And you let them basically win the game because they blocked a punt and they blocked a field goal. Are you kidding me? Also, Aaron Rodgers, you had no more excuses. That is the game you have to win. It's snowing. It's near It's near zero. It's a Saturday night. They're off. Your defense is finally stepping up that you have maligned backhandedly, kind of made side comments about how you're not getting any help. Are you kidding me? Aaron Rodgers, you have to get that done. Fast forward. Uh, go ahead. Can I actually? This is the one game I oh, think did, that did, spoke did, the mo- okay, spoke ahead. the most. I think we realized how bad of a game manager Matt before is. That's all I wanted to say about this comment. If you want to, if not, move on. No, I mean Matt Matt Lafleur is a young coach, absolutely, but he got out coached by. Kyle Shanahan, 110%. Also, I think that this also goes to show, though, that Jimmy G's, this is why that they drafted Trey Lance and everyone, they're so noncommittal on Jimmy G. Because when you have a game like that where your defense, speaking of, is playing excellent and Mm -hmm. holds Aaron Rodgers to 10 points, you, Jimmy G, I mean, you have to put up at least 17 points there. So good for Robbie Gold. He hit the he hit the game winner. Uh, uh, McPherson hit the game winner for Cincy. Oh, and kickers have hella swag. Listen, if you don't know, I need HBO Hard Knocks to follow a certain amount of kickers around all season because they holler in hella swag. So before McPherson, the Bengals kicker, goes to kick yeah. the field goal, Joe Burrow okay. goes how sixth you, round sixth round draft out of Florida draft pick out of Florida. Okay, he 
he um he goes you feel you feeling good Joe Burrow asks him if he's feeling good and McPherson goes well I guess we're going to the AFC title game then and w- well Dak here's the deal I'm the best there is plain and simple I mean I wake up in the morning I piss excellent walks onto the field nails the game winner right straight down right, the middle exactly Robbie Gold let's fast forward to Robbie Gold Robbie Gold they're introducing the players before pregame. They're running out like of the player tunnel onto the field, across the field. Robbie Gold is kicking practice field goals over top of from the, the play- yard line uh, from the in Lambo in Lambo and nailing them as as the players are running out, just kicking balls over their head. Okay, hella swag these kickers got. Hashtag <laughs> for the brand. Game number three, probably the game, well, not the game of the day, because the game of the day was later, but it was uh, Tampa and Los Angeles Rams, and Los Angeles jumped out to this huge lead, and I, it was 20 to 3, and, or 17 to 3, and uh, the Buccaneers just kicked a field goal, and I looked at my wife, and I said, this is going to be a great game, and she goes, well, but the, but the Buccaneers are losing by so much. And I go, J- just wait. So anyway, I turn off the game, but I keep it on my phone because I, I'm just waiting for the Tom Brady to start his comeback. Tom Brady mounts a comeback. Rams fumbled four times. Akers fumbled. Cam Akers fumbled it twice. One right before halftime, which was a backbreaker. That, they would have won it in uh, regulation. And then one, they just, Tom Brady just made it 20 to 27. Mm-hmm. And Neo Dominican Sue sticks out his arm and Cam Akers fumbles and then on a fourth and inches he hand on Tom Brady's possible final play, he hands the ball off to Leonard Fournette who bounces it outside and ties the football game. What? Okay, hold on. I yeah. saw that play. Yeah. Dude underrated. People hate on Leonard Fournette. Yeah. Great player. Yeah, Continue. Leonard Fournette was a great move, great player, and he his catching skills have have come along. Increased. Yeah, yeah. So then they get the ball back. The Rams there gets the ball back, and you have to cover one person for the Rams. Do you know who that person is, Simeon? Uh, Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup. Exactly. He was the Triple Crown r- winner. Led the NFL in catches, receiving yards, and touchdowns. First play out route. Cooper Cup. Wide open. Fine. They gained like 12 yards. Second play, it was a run up the middle by Stafford, and they had to use timeouts. So we have zero timeouts with about 30 seconds left to play. They put Cooper Cup in the slot. You have to cover who's a man? Cooper Cup. They snap the ball. Cooper Cup runs right by Antonio Winfield, the same guy who threw up the peace sign to Tyreek Hill in the Super Bowl last year. Oh, because yeah, uh-huh. he. Well, his secondary, but he was a main cause of shutting down Tyreek Hill. He let a white guy hit your button, Simeon. A what? A white man run right by him. Oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Actually, a white man. No. Well, what does security do about it? Nothing. Exactly. (laughs) A white man runs right by Antonio Winfield, and you can just tell Antonio Winfield is saying to himself, "This white kid can not just the one outrun me. He he just cannot. He is physically incapable." Cooper Cup runs behind Antonio Winfield. Matthew Stafford finds him on a dime. They catch the ball. It's like a 30-something field goal. Matthew Stafford runs down there. They spike the ball. They Matt Guy then kicks a game-winning field goal, and they beat Tom Brady. So what good a on, name. What, on, what a name. Good for Matthew Stafford. And then the game of the day. Oh, my gosh. So I went to bed. It was 17-14 to 14 at halftime. And what just happens in the final two minutes of the game? You mentioned it. In one minute, 54 seconds. We had a bomb. Josh Allen threw a bomb to oh my goodness, I forget his I forget the receiver's name now. He had two hundred and eight yards and four touchdowns. Can you look it up for me, please? Mm-hmm. He threw a bomb to whoever this guy is. They take the it's lead. Not Stephon, not Stephon Diggs, right? No, it's not okay. Stefan Diggs had seven yards. <laughs> How do you have seven yards? It's 
Anyway, then Patrick Mahomes comes back, finds Tyreek Hill for a big for a big 60-yard touchdown. Then Josh Allen comes back for a Gabriel Davis. Gabriel Davis finds Gabriel Davis again in the end zone. And they go up, then they hit a two-point conversion, go up three. That gives that's with 13 seconds left, everyone. And you're thinking Patrick Mahomes has 13 seconds left, three timeouts. There's no way he can he can score. And what happens? He leads a drive to make it a 40-yard field goal. Harrison Bucker nails it. And then uh, in overtime, Chiefs win the coin toss and go right down the field and score, which leads everyone to say that they do not like the NFL overtime rules, which we have been saying forever, Simeon. So good on us. You like that? You like that? The Chiefs did, when they lost to Tom Brady in the AFC Championship game, proposed a rule that both teams should get a possession no matter what in in playoff overtime, and that was voted down. And now the Bills are on. Funny how that works. The Bills are now on board with that, that rule is. change. So, what what are you doing, buddy? It's just wrapping paper. Oh, my goodness. My dog's freaking out in the closet because wrapping paper, I guess, I is scary. Too. So that leaves conference championships of Kansas City and Cincinnati, which is going to be a heck of a game. I'm going to take the revenge. It's also a revenge game for the Chiefs. I'll take the Chiefs. And then you have the Niners and Rams. What do you mean? How is that a revenge game? Because the Bengals beat the Chiefs in the regular season, like in week 17. Uh, Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. And then you have the Niners and Rams. The Rams haven't beaten the Niners in six tries, in the last six tries. Yeah, no, it was it was nice seeing the it was it was nice. It's going to be fun. The question is I'm going to take the Rams who's gonna, by the way. Oh, I was about to say who's going to who's going to be visiting the Niners in the Super Bowl? Who's going to be winning the Super Bowl? Cuz really, here's the deal. Whoever wins the AFC Championship wins the Super Bowl in my opinion. Sorry, it, it's it, So you think the Bengals wait, hold are on, that good? Hold, uh he just figured out the whole damn thing from beginning to end like he was in the room. Listen, it, yeah, 100%. I think the Bengals are that. I think, okay, here's the deal. You have on the Kansas City Chiefs one hand where you literally have backyard football where these two guys go, well, there's this one thing that they do, and if they do it, I'm going to do this one thing. And then you literally have, hey, Kelsey, yeah, go go do that one thing. Yeah. Okay. And uh-huh. For those of you who don't realize, Travis, Travis Kelsey, the thing that set up and the 13 seconds, you know, that whole thing, was Travis Kelsey ran right up the seam uh, after lining up. Uh, he was he was lined up far, but he ran right up the seam, and and Patrick Mahomes just throws it right to him. Yeah. Like, it's backyard yeah. football it, sort it, of it, stuff. It, it's backyard. We, okay, yeah. not to be weird, me and my brother-in-law ran the same play, and I got a touchdown on you. Let's just put it that way, okay? It's literally backyard football sort of stuff. Then you have Joe Burrow. Who won that game, by the way? Shut up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Who orchestrated a touchdown? So pile into your clown car of lies, because you're all going down. Who, who, who orchestrated a lies, touchdown lies. drive on every drive he was quarterback of? That would be this kid. A white man! <laughs> a white man, you are correct. <laughs> um, okay, and then you have Mr. Cool himself and Joe Burrow. Yep. And he throws it to the next... Insert great wide receiver so my, here, my Jamar only, Chase. My only problem with the Bengals are, I understand he was sacked nine times and they still won the game. Tennessee, but he was sacked nine times. Yeah, he was sacked nine times, and Tennessee's offense re- was. A, I don't know how much you caught, but they thought that Derrick Henry would be in midseason form, and Derrick Henry was in. He just came off a of surgery and activated off a of surgery form. Okay, if Derrick Henry was in midseason form, I think that game goes a lot differently. But the fact that. So if the Bengals play the Rams, you have Von Miller and Aaron Donald and Michael Floyd on one side. And then if they play the Niners, you have Joey Bosa and DeForest Buckner. Yeah. It's so just here's, not going to go well. The, well, no, here's the issue is the Rams will find a way to shoot themselves in the foot. I think that's where they're at. Okay. I don't think I, I don't think I they're don't, as good as people think they no, are. I, no, I don't think they ha- people no, 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 think no, no, no. they're as good as they, they think they are. They have a lot of talent. I will give them that. But they're like... They're like the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yeah. I'll give you a team. The Los Angeles Dodgers. They are yeah, all I, in on this time window. 100%. And good, and good for them. You know, and they might prove me wrong. And I'm not going to be upset if they win. Okay? 
really, at the end of the day, I'm not going to be upset. But normally teams who need another year to stew need another year to stew. There's a reason that it's twenty that the Warriors blew a 3-1 lead. Okay? They need another year to stew, and I really feel like that's where the Rams are. I feel like that's where the Bengals are, actually. No, the Bengals are one year away from and a good O-line draft pick and good development way from destroying the AFC. Well, wouldn't that be they need one year to stew? No. Yes. No, 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 no. Because the Rams are a flash in the pan. They're going to be one year, then they won't be able to pay everybody and buy. They're going to – Sean McVay is going to get fired, and he's going to go <laughs> – <he's, laughs> you're, okay. you're out of your gourd, mark man. My, mark my words. Okay. In how many years were, were, I have, will will Sean McVay be fired? In how many? Five. You know how five. old? Do you know how old he'll be in five years? He'll be what? Like forty? He'll be forty. Yeah. 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 No. 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 He will be out of the job at the Los Angeles Rams. He'll get, he'll get hired in like the Giants or the Jets or something like that. Oh, throw I a lot hope of money not. At him. He, Sean McVay does not deserve that. Listen. Listen. I just think Matthew Staff. This is Matthew Stafford's time to show everyone we are a lot better than what you think we are. And as long as Matt Stafford doesn't turn the ball over against San Francisco, I think the Rams run away with. And that. They don't fumble the ball. Well, yeah. Also, Cam Akers. If I'm Sean McVay, sorry, Cam Akers. And the your defensive. The defensive line has to show up and actually. Aaron Donald and Von Miller have to show up on in the NFC Championship game. Okay. I'm more Listen, concerned about Jalen Ramsey covering Debo Samuel. You see what I'm saying? You got a lot of talent who thinks they're a lot of talent. Who and is only, a lot of talent. No, no, no. I only trust Aaron Donald in that. In Of, of everybody. Now, here's the Was deal. Was Von Miller Von, not the now, that's, Super Bowl That's MVP? number two. But I also think maybe not. Like, I think Aaron Donald's a sure thing. I think Von Miller's hit or miss. I, right? I, I, I think it's like Odell Beckham Jr. I think he's a great target, but maybe not all the great target. Well, the but fact you that... also have, but you also have Cooper Cup on the other side. So yeah, it's see, it's too, you're there's too many on your own. Argument. No, yes, too... you had one job. There's too many. Again, humans are pretty dumb. <laughs> there are too many question marks. They're just not developed enough for me to believe in them enough. So, so you're saying the Niners don't have any question marks? No, the- no, no. I believe in the Niners question marks more than I do the Rams <laughs> question marks. And you're out of your guard. Oh <laughs> no. my. Okay. You're, no. No. <laughs> One. Okay. Here's the okay, deal. Okay. Okay. But 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 let's put this whole thing to bed. The best okay. team left in the playoffs is the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, 100%. And and so if the Kansas City Chiefs, you're taking Kansas City this week, and whoever Kansas – and if they win and if they make the Super Bowl, you're ca- taking Kansas okay. City next week too. Here, here's or here's weeks, the real whatever question. It is. 100%. Here's yeah. the real question. Which is a Super Bowl you'd rather see? Because I know there's only one right answer here. Okay. Bengals, Niners. Yeah. Chiefs, Rams. It's Chiefs, Rams. Yeah, all day, but, all but, day. But so, so this we'd, is the we'd Super- all rather see best so, of seven so, against. So this is the Super Bowl that everyone wanted. Remember when they played that great game in the Coliseum, fifty one, fifty four. But it was Jared Goff in against yeah. Patrick Mahomes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, everyone yeah. wanted that Super Bowl. But instead, it was Tom Brady and Jared listen, Goff. I will, and so now we get the repeat. But it's Matthew Stafford and Patrick Mahomes. Listen, I will cream my pants if I get that as a Super Bowl. <laughs> And you know what sucks about that is I have to work at 6 a.m. the following Sunday. Oh! Because I asked off for the wrong Monday. Oh! You like that? You like that? I forgot that they played 18 games this year. And so they pushed the Oh, Super they Bowl. pushed it back? They pushed it. It is now February 13th. and it's not the second Sunday. And not February. Yes. And so, I, I mean, of course, I'm going to stay up and watch Sorry, the game. Ma'am. But... I'm going to be just tired the next day. That's all. All right. First we have problems. To, we hashtag. have to wrap up on a very strange. We're talking college basketball. Um, I'm not saving this for next week because this is the one thing that. You know you that we're I, an hour and 15 minutes into this thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going full send. Okay. Oh, okay. We, spent, all right. we spent. Listen, we've well, lost hurry up. everybody. Well, hurry up. Because I got to pee. Do we just wrap up and say Penny Hardaway for next for next? Oh week? no, it's Pe- I forgot we were talking about Penny Hardaway. Let's talk about Penny Hardaway because that aggravates I... the crap out of me. Okay, 
Go okay. for it. And it shouldn't. No, it, it should. Okay, it should. so la- ladies and gentlemen, Penny Hardaway lost it after a bad loss to the SMU Mustangs where – he just got absolutely trounced in every way. He had, a, he had a top five recruiting class, and he was supposed to be a, a, a top team in the nation. And their team has been hampered by both injuries and COVID. And I will COVID. give him that. Yeah. Continue. So, I don't like the way he reacted to this. Okay? 100%. Do not like the way he reacted. Are you going to pull it up? Uh, I was pulling up the men's basketball team, if that's what you're well, talking about. Well, why don't you about. pull up the clip? Uh I don't think we can show it. Oh. Okay. Um, but... Go Google Penny Hardaway gets angry at media. You'll find it pretty yeah. quick. Yeah, we can... I can... If you want me to pull up the quote, I can pull no, up the quote. No, it, it's I'm not fine. really worried it's about fine. it. He basically says, go F yourself. We're injured. They're not. They have a bunch of seniors. We don't. We blah, have a blah, bunch blah, of blah, blah, That's exa- Actually, that's exactly what he said. They have a bunch yeah. of seniors, and we have a bunch of freshmen. Yeah. We have and a bunch of injuries and This COVID is why I don't like it, because... Penny, Penny, I get it. They have a bunch of seniors. But when your players play like they're in middle school, you're going to lose the game. Okay? Um, so Memphis is currently 4-4 four and four after starting the season. Where were they start this season? In the top 25, at least. They were predicted to finish in the coaches' media poll second under Houston. Yeah. Okay? So they have... A five-star recruit at small forward, a five-star recruit at center, uh, two four-star recruits. Oh, that sorry, that was the recruiting class. Two four-star recruits yeah. at center. It was and a, a five. It was a top ten recruiting yeah. class, if not. Higher. And they and they transferred in one guy from Miami, one guy from Oregon, and one guy from Iowa State. Yeah. Um, they, it, they were stacked. Okay, so I agree a hundred percent with what Penny said. 100, 100% with what he was trying to say. 0% with what he said. Now, if you want to have a discussion about how successful Penny Hardaway has been as a coach, that's totally different. And I think that's really the discussion you want to get no, at. No, right? no, 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 no. No, the discussion... The, I mean, we can have that discussion, although that's not really a, a much of a discussion because he's been nothing uh, to this point. What I, What I want to say is... I agree, like, his points are valid. He makes a valid point. But here's all people... He's getting he's getting angry at the media. For his lack of coaching? For his lack of ability to coach and win games. In which they should, in the media should get on him for it. I understand he has injuries and COVID and all of this, but guess what? You, this is your alma mater. You have now brought in two big-time recruiting classes, if not three. The person who also got hired in the same coaching cycle as you that returned to his alma mater, Jawan Howard, is running, now this year's a down year, is running laps around you at Michigan. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get angry for the media calling you out as they should. Because literally, if you're, I don't know, the, 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 the top coach in college basketball right now, well, Mike Krzyzewski is going to, is retiring at the end of this year. It's going to be uh, the guy, Fudge, what's his name at Kentucky? Uh, John Calipari, thank you. John Let's Calipari. go with John Calipari. Probably, jo- that's probably the Right, right. The, the, if the, not, it's the guy at UNC. Right, the, the biggest, well, Roy Williams, he retired too. Oh, that's right, he did. I so about so that. let's just go with John Calipari. If John yep. Calipari had this type of success. We jumped on John Calipari. John Calipari kept bringing in these monster recruiting guys never won a natty. And mm-hmm. guess what? Media jumped on him. And guess what? He has to lay there and you have to take it. You have to say, yeah, we're not playing up to expectations. But no, you want to lash out at the media for calling you out on not being the coach everyone thought that you could be. Because right now, you suck as a coach. Like, you have done nothing in the NC. In the in March Madness, nothing, zero things. So Penny Hardaway, great player. Uh, so, so John Calipari, that was Derrick Rose. He was Derrick Rose's coach. So that was the last successful time that Miami, that Memphis was successful. Okay. Yep. Uh, John Calipari coached nine seasons before going to Kentucky. He had a seventy-five percent winning record. Yep. Um, Penny Hardaway has had three seasons. 
He's basically he's at sixty six percent. So he's basically won two thirds of the games that he's played. Okay. That he's coached. Um he's also shown up in the he's also won the NIT, which is the runner up of yeah, everything. Sure. You can make a big deal about the NIT, but it doesn't mean anything. Oh well, it's still success. Now you were completely rebuilding a program from the ground up. But it's easy to do in basketball, man. But it's not. But it is. But, okay, no, because we have to look at Michigan as the perfect example. Because Michigan had it. And Jawan Howard is no, 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 this no. close away from losing it. Okay, well, well, okay. So, so fine, let's take Jawan Howard. And also, no offense, Villanova is irrelevant after, I forget his name, leaves. Jay Wright? And Isn't Jay Wright still there? Jay Wright, he is. If Jay Wright leaves, which the guy's young, he's like in his 50s, I think. If he leaves, they're screwed. Right. Mike, every new coach. Okay, it's not the same thing with college football or football. You're not necessarily irrelevant the year after you leave. You reset the clock, bam, and a new coach in college basketball. And basketball in general. So I understand that Juwan Howard may have had more and Penny had to rebuild it, but again, you had his first class yeah, he but, brought okay, in. So, he brought in yeah. like. 100%. Like two of the top five players nationally. Yeah, uh, 100%. No, no, no. He, he he brought in ridiculously good players. Yeah. The issue is the dude coached high school before this and then went to Memphis. He brought in good players. Okay, great, awesome. Juwan Howard was a coach before he landed at Michigan. And more specifically, four years is really nothing right now. Next year, yeah, you're 100% correct. You are. You will be one hundred percent. I just next feel like year. you're making my argument. So he goes no, from high no. school to to college, and he's not really doing anything. No, at I don't think. Okay, but he doesn't have any players. That's where I agree with him. No, but he's been th- this he year. Got, but in previous years, he has. Okay, so you have a in a, you have an inexperienced coach with inexperienced players. Yeah. But he he was. What am I missing here? But, but he was looked at. Or has been looked at as someone to turn the Memphis program around and start competing 100%, for national. One hundred percent. Yeah, and listen, if the NBA playoffs are not one game w- losses, the the NIT brings teams in as they lose in the in March Madness. No, they doesn't. I'm pretty sure they no, do. No, the they? NIT is basically just March Madness. At it's just the backup to March Madness. Is you're not good enough to to play in March Madness, so you play in this mm. bracket instead. Yeah, you're right. Okay, y- y- you see what I'm saying? Like, I like I I see where you're coming from. As yeah, maybe you need to give him he, time to mature. I, I, but John Calipari, a year, a year. You need to give him another year, and then I think it's 100. percent And I think you're throwing him under the bus too soon. No, I, I'm I'm not. I'm calling him out. No, I'm calling him out on his in on his inefficiencies and inabilities as a head coach, as in to put a solid game plan together even with young kids. And then he wants to get mad at me, not me personally. He wants right. to get mad at me for calling him out on it and call me the bad guy. But I'm just doing what literally everyone sees you're doing, and now you're getting, you're basically getting mad at yourself for not being able to do what you want to. You're not as good as what you thought you were. Is what I'm <laughs> they saying. They are who they thought they yeah, were. Exactly. He's not as Penny Hardaway listen, is not nearly as good as, as someone, what I think he thought. As he would someone be. who had who was on the receiving end of a Penny style type burst for doing exactly what you are today, I agree with you. I just. I think we can cut the guy some slack. Because here's the deal. The media just hounds on everybody. No, I, I understand. And, and and it's his alma mater, and it's different. And yes, the media, but n- he's had some time now. Yeah. Okay, but it's 2022. Like, if, if this was 2019 times three, where he didn't have to worry about anything, he's brought in the recruiting class... Everybody's acting normal, whatever the case is, and this is the result. The dude should be fired next year, at the end of the year. They should mutually do, d- decide to part ways. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. But that's not the case. We've had some weird two years, where you basically he lost a year last year, 
for lack of a better well, term. Two years ago, yeah. Two years ago. Yeah, in 2020, to be fair, in 2020, I think he was on. I think he was in the top ten and was on track to make March Madness. I think. And in 20, so he made the he made the second round of NIT. Okay, big whoops to me and congratulations. In 2019, that would be his first year. 2021, he beat, he won the NIT. So that is showing off of a team who hasn't been who wasn't anything until he showed basically showed up again. That's pretty good. Mm. So I'm saying, listen, under normal circumstances, if this was the situation, yeah, throw him under the bus, get him, run him out of town. This isn't normal situations. I, I I'm saying that it is normal situations for the expectation and the fact he recruited. It, no, if, see, if he didn't, it, I think expectations so, are off. No, no, but if he didn't recruit, so but none of his recruits were on the floor. They they were. Well, I mean, technically, the, all of his recruits are always on yeah, the floor. Yeah, but, okay. Exactly, exactly. But the guys he recruited last year and the year before who stayed, yeah, weren't on the floor. He was running five freshmen. I. Uh, this is not about the one game. I'm not penalizing Penny for that one game. Obviously, I'm giving him a pass for running five freshmen because he You're has. You're talking injury. about the other four losses that he has right now. He doesn't, Simeon. They've played more than eight games. They're like halfway through their season. Mm, I'm pretty sure. March I Madness just saw it. starts in six weeks, bro. Oh, fudge, ripple. No. Con- oh, over. I was looking at their conference. They're four and four in the conference. They're four my and bad. four in the conference. They're yeah. ten. And, they're ten and eight overall. Ex- my, my apologies. Exactly. My apologies. Exactly. So, I, I under, I understand that it's one game, and, and. That that's fine. I'll give him a pass for that game. But it's the other, however many eight eight you know ten and eight. Yeah. I understand yeah, it's yeah, not. Yeah. But but outside of that, he doesn't like. I understand comparing him to Jawan Howard. Jawan Howard walked into a pretty good situation at Michigan. Yeah. But and he walked into nothing. But also, if you think about it, John Calipari did the exact same thing at Kentucky. John Calipari walked into nothing at Kentucky and went to the Natty that first year. All right. All right. All right. Well, I All mean, right. we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, it's one of the per, things. Per usual, per usual, I'm wrong. Well, right? I, I wouldn't say that. I would say maybe you're half right, and I'm half wrong. Well, we're looking at it from two different perspectives. Yeah, sure. But after the day I've had, I'm not. I'm no, not let's really uh, let's wrap this up because uh, I got you eat have dinner. to pee. I get it. And Listen, pee. guys, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the fourth and one podcast. Thank you so much for listening. If you've made it this far, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> Everyone's turned it off. Like obvi- probably in the first thirty minutes when we fell down. After that I d- d- just we dive deep into <laughs> Wikipedia, people were like, you know what? I'll go listen to Rogan. You know, it's not worth. Yeah, it. It, it, it's, it's not, not. This isn't worth my time. It's not worth my time. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not worth my time. This it, this podcast is not worth my time. Also, speaking of not worth my time, we haven't gotten a um, review from mom in a while. I don't think mom's listening anymore. Like I yeah. I understand her dad died and you know she was in de- and her life's kind of busy and stuff. I honestly don't think mom's listening anymore. It's very it's very highly possible. Yeah. So um, we might just be talking to ourselves from now on. Uh, no, we do have more than that. We have a couple listeners. Oh, well, you okay. know, at least there are them. And thank you for listening, everybody. And thank you for listening, guys. You can obviously just shout us out on uh, YouTube or Instagram. We would love to hear from you. And, yeah, we're yeah, not we just, sure would. Absolutely. <laughs> we're not just staring into the void. We always love hearing from you. We also... Uh, you can also support us if you really want to throw us a couple bucks your way. We'll give you a shout out. Fourth anchor.fm slash fourth and one. Remember Bakaya. to wash, wash your hands, you filthy animals. And we'll we see love you, you guys. We'll bless. see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>